Either way later, way or yeah, that's what I, I know. Turned on. All right, if you would please rise. I've asked Mike Burns, if your church, to come and open us in prayer today. I want to thank the Michigan's court and thank you, Judge, for allowing us to have the National Day of Prayer. It's very special for us and doing this. Thank you. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you as we open up the court in prayer today. We come before you. You're the Lord and the God of all wisdom and guidance. So as these men, this court, and these citizens, as we as part of this county, today meet together today to officiate the business of our county, we just ask your help, and guidance, and leadership. We know what we know. We do what we can do as human beings. But we as people who trust God, we trust for you to give us wisdom and guidance. Thank you for the court. Thank you for these men that are elected to this court. That help us, guide us in our county. Thank you to the citizens out here at the gallery that we, Lord, today submit unto you and we submit unto this court today. Thank you for the business. Thank you for your blessings today on this place and in this courthouse. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Pledge yes. to the American in the Texas flag, American flag. I pledge to the United States, States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. All right, you may be seated. I will call this meeting to order at 9.01. We do have a quorum present. All of the commissioners are here and myself. So are there any general announcements? Ninety voters yesterday. Okay. For the first day of early voting. Okay. All right. I, I have one announcement. Okay. I want to remind everybody of the uh, Memorial Day, the Benjamin County Veterans Memorial uh, Board is is sponsoring uh, the Memorial, Memorial Day event. Will be at the uh, uh, Memorial at uh, two forty three and uh, nineteen. Uh, everybody's welcome to come. What time? Ten a.m. Be at ten a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And I'd like to remind everybody to turn your cell phones off, the ringers off, if you would please. Uh, do we have any public comments? Anybody signed up for public comments? No public comments. All right, we will move on to item number four, consent agenda. 
the consent agenda is considered routine by the commissioner's court will be enacted one motion. No separate discussion on these items unless the county judge or commissioner requests an item be removed or content agenda considered separately. Is there any items to discuss? Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to uh, pull the line item transfer and, uh, and then I'd like to make a, co uh, a comment on the monthly reports. All right. Would you like to make your monthly report comment? Yes, sir. We, we received all of our <clears throat> April reports uh, from uh, myself and I'm sure the rest of this court. I'd like to say thank you uh, to all those that submitted those reports. Okay, very good. All right, would you like to uh, pull item number D, discuss the approval of fiscal year 2024 line item transfers? What would you like to discuss? I'd like to, uh, uh, just for, I, I have investigated it, but there's a line item transfer on there where we're moving money from salaries to other things. And uh, it was this court's decision when we built our budget last year that that would not happen. We will never move money from excess money from salaries to uh, other things, but this is, is an exception. And uh, I don't know if the sheriff wants to explain it or if you want me to explain it uh, of what's going on on our, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you, uh, to let everyone know that's listening on YouTube and here, uh, that is <clears throat> the money's being moved is from, uh, we're short as always on staff at the sheriff's office. We received a, uh, <clears throat> $500,000 grant from the state of Texas, we put all of that grant towards salaries and anticipating that we would have full staff, but well, we don't. And uh, that grant can be used for things other than salaries. It can be used for salaries or it can be used for equipment uh, such as uh, patrol squad car. Well, we're short of salaries and we're coming down to the deadline on this money and we're either going to have to Re reallocate this money to buy equipment with it instead of salaries, or we're going to uh, refund it to the state of Texas. So uh, it's good catch on the sheriff's department and the auditor's department. If we don't uh, reallocate that money, we're going to lose it. So we're taking that, uh, I can't remember now, 58 or 53,000, somewhere 53,000, and we're moving it from salaries to equipment for the sheriff to purchase uh, a, a new car with. So that's that's just clarification to all the people that are listening to this. All uh, right, and Sheriff, did you want to explain why we're what what happened as yeah, far as I cut it off? We well, had to order vehicles for getting right now to come in and redeem for We had places orders back at the late mayor early June last year. We got an idea of what those vehicles would come in at. They do governmental uh, assistance. The program for the manufacturer, uh, what is it called? Government prices for the vehicles. Well, they sell them a level of price of what they would sell them normally for retail. The price of these vehicles came in at the price we felt maybe last year when we planned a budget was it came in at this year, I believe seventy thousand dollars per unit more expensive. They cut the government price and got the legal cut the stall of the year also. So we're paying fifty five. We're looking at these vehicles being thirty five, thirty eight thousand for the base vehicle. These vehicles came in at fifty five, fifty five thousand. Even that without adding radios, siren, red lights, video cameras, and car cameras. And uh, we originally ordered ten, correct? And then yeah. they they came back in Our November. Five.
So we normally order five, ask for 10, got to cut three. We got vehicles in, there's a couple of extra vehicles up there. And I'd like to see at some point in the future, we are able to turn these vehicles a little quicker and not keep them in for the quarter time because we're very cost for them. And the cost that we're talking about are one of our All right. All right. Thank you very much. Is that is that all you have on the yes, line transfers? All right. Uh, now that we've discussed that item, is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved, person. Is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion passes. Item number five, discuss considered approval of the audit report for fiscal year. Uh, ending 9-30-2023, presented by Patillo Brown and Hill LLP from Waco, Texas. Yeah. All right. Good morning. Questions? Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Travis Rogers, and I am an audit supervisor with the Control Brown and Old Lake South Pico. So I was just here this morning to briefly uh, share with the core the results of the fiscal year 2020 audit. So, like last week, uh, Judge Reese and Sandy and myself and John Manning, uh, Audit partner on the audit page of the county did it via a team's call with the hour 15 minute long sleeves rolled up down in the weeds. Mm -hmm. I think for the benefit of everyone here, I'm going to try to truncate that just a little bit and focus on the higher points. But if anyone, if anyone has any questions or comments or anything, definitely give me the honor. Looking through and start first at the very beginning on page one. We're looking at the audit report, not the letter, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Page one of the annual financial report. Let's go to page one. Obviously, this is the independent auditors report, which uh, we've all seen in prior years, which uh, basically is about three pages long, contains some a lot of standardized language about our um, responsibility as the county's outside auditors to audit and render an opinion on these type of statements. Also, on the responsibility of the county management uh, for the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements, all that fun stuff. The most critical part you'll see is at the very top of page one. Right under report on the audit of financial statements under opinions. The second paragraph down where it begins with, in our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects, the respective financial position, and the changes in financial position as of and for the year end September 30th, 2023. All that. Basically means that's what we call an unmodified or a an opinion, which is the highest level of assurance we're able to render on the county's financial statements as the outside auditors. Basically means as a result of all of our audit work, all of our testing, going through looking at cash, investments, receivables, payables, all the assets, liabilities, revenues, expenditures. In all of our, as a result of all of our testing, no uh, material departures from general accepted accounting principles were noted. So, like I said, 
unmodified or change opinion. Um, on this level, the sugar we can provide um, it's fine, I should say, but I have one very quick highlight to point out as we're looking for on page 11. And page 11 begins the double roll fund financial statements, which includes the county's general and they are fund. One quick number to point out here, you can see down towards the bottom of page one in a unassigned fund balance. So unassigned essentially the amount of uh, fund balance in the general fund as a year end that has no internal or external description placed on its use. So available for the county to spend to fund its operations as it sees fit. That number as of September 30th, 2023 was about 10.4 million. We compare that to the expenditures of the general fund for the year on page 14. Just a little over 15 million for the year. So run some quick numbers. We talk uh, as far as days or months and five balance, that's roughly just a hair over eight months for the expenditures and general fund on a side of five balance. The classic rule of thumb is shoot for around three to six months minimum, if possible. So if you're maintaining around eight to nine months, <coughs> it's not a very much signed fund balance. That's what we would call a healthy fund balance. It's one that is definitely a, which is definitely not excessive in a way. It's not growing, it's not indicative of any. Any concerns in either direction? Couple other things towards the back on page fifty nine. Couple more of those letters towards the back of the report here in just one. This one here is simply a summary and explanation of our requirements as your outside auditors and the quarters of government auditing standards. In essence, any audit of the state or local government perform in accordance with those standards, we have to consider and document as part of our audit what are the laws, regulations, grant agreements, contracts, things of that nature. That not compliance with really having a material effect on the financial statements. If there was any such non compliance, we would describe it and disclose it here. Thankfully, there is none to report for fiscal year 2023. So, this is just the kind of standard plain Jane letter describing those requirements based on those standards. Have one more letter following on page 61. As the very first well, is our opinion on county's financial statements. This letter is uh, describing our opinion on the county's compliance with federal grant requirements. Essentially, entities that can spend $750,000 more of federal funding during any given year with subject to that. Federal signal audit. We could go ahead and essentially uh, select grant programs based on their size, certain other risk factors, and test. Test the first months like banking, giving the bank payroll, going costs coded to those grants, anything like that, and test those for are they allowable under the terms of the grant and the federal guidelines. I want to say a little bit of controls for those this this first month's content for everyone. So same as before, a uh, second third rank down from the top on page 61. And then in our opinion, the county complied in all material respects with the compliance requirements referred to above. So essentially same as before on the county's financial statements. 
there's an unmodified or clean opinion, meaning as a result of that federal civil right, no uh, non compliance or question costs or anything of that nature were noted as a result of that. Audit. <laughs> Curious, those federal expenditures are broken out and listed on page 64. On page 66, the very four that can break down the summary of the results of that audit and, and the opinions and findings, et cetera. Once again, unmodified opinion and no findings on either. So, just to very quickly summarize, unmodified or clean opinion on the financial statements, the same unmodified clean opinion on federal single audit and looking at county holding steady at about eight months working federal fund expenditures and fund balance as of the end of this year 2023. So that was the quick reader side this version. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking if that was a quick version, what do you suggest the judge and Sandy do last week? <laughs> but, it's a floor weather kind of on its highlights. If anyone has any questions or comments, et cetera. Well, here we'll have you But I just would like to say that uh, I thank you for your, your report, but it I don't uh the reason why we have a good report is because of our auditor and her staff. They do an incredible job keeping up, keeping everything in line, keeping us in line, I guess you might say. So. Yes, sir, 100% of the Sandy for entire staff, everyone here at the county we work with is phenomenal. We work with close to 200 on all of these around the state. And you guys are very, very easy to work with. Everyone's very creative, works hard, get us everything we can answer our questions. Everyone who, it seems like every year, everyone who works with the, the county on audit remarks, man, everyone who runs that county is just on the ball and the other stuff that they're ready for us. And we very much appreciate it. It's very, if that makes our job easy, so uh, get in, get out, and everyone really moves on out of it. So. Yeah, very much second. So do we get a discount because of that? <laughs> I, I will make a note. I will mention that John. Okay, you do know, that. He does send his regards also. He wants to play over here. No problem. All right. Do y'all have any questions? Job well Good done. Good job, Sandy. Yeah. Thank you, you and your crew. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you, Travis. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Is there a, a motion to accept the audit report for fiscal year ending 9-30-2023? So made. Second. The motion made. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Item number six, discuss and consider extending disaster declaration of May 16th, 2024. Uh, for those of you who don't know, made it a disaster declaration due to the uh, rainy weather that has occurred in our county and we've had a significant damage to bridges and roads. Uh, the reason why that I made the disaster declaration is that uh, we have the potential to be able to get assistance in repairs. Uh, but the governor made the, the declaration and he uh, in fact extended it again today uh, for the rainstorms that started on April 26 and have continued on. And uh, uh, in order for us to be eligible for that, you know, once the governor does it, the county has to do it too. And then, then we can be eligible for the assistance if we meet a certain threshold that threshold is roughly $275,000. So if the if the commissioners find in the, their work and they can document the uh, amount of damages and what it costs us to repair, 
and we exceed the 275, then we can apply for assistance from the, the government, the state in that regard. So what uh, when I signed the declaration last week, uh, it's only good for seven days. That's, that is the longest that, that it was good for in, in order for us to continue it. And this is what the governor did is doing is we have to uh, uh, vote on whether or not to extend it for another 30 days. Yeah, and also the state has to reach a threshold too before we can get anything. Okay. State, I think their threshold is 159 million. Mm -hmm. So they had to, when they reach their threshold, then if we reach our threshold, then we're, we're, we can maybe get some money from people. There's about 50 counties that were named in the disaster. And uh, I know there's some south of us that had significant flooding damage uh, in that regard. So to be safe, I'm, I'm motion to extend, Judge. All right, for 30 days? Yes, sir. All right. There's a motion to extend the disaster declaration. Second. 16. And second, and any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion passes. So I'll, I'll work up the extension declaration. Item number seven, discuss and consider allowing the purchase of a ticket printer for Precinct 3 Constable using Justice Court technology funds pursuant to Code of Criminal Procedure, Article 102.0173. Okay, who's it is? Oh, it's Scott. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Constable Cochran asked me about this, and then uh, we decided we had Sandy about it, we could use the technology funds. He asked Judge Dunn, so Judge Dunn approved it. Sandy said it's okay. Bell said it's okay. And then Jeff asked uh, Tommy, Precinct One, if he wanted to. And we got a, a email from Judge McMillan saying that he approved the expenditure from the technology funds. And so if we could add that one on there too. We could actually do both. Y'all approved that. I don't know that we can add to that agenda item. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. No, I'm not saying we can't do it, but we can't add it. <laughs> this is specific for our precinct three. We can come back next meeting and approve yeah. more time. Yeah, it was supposed to be changed. Okay. What does that do? Just uh, they automatically print the ticket out? Mm -hmm. right. and while they're, they're in the car. And everything's logged through so the software and track completely right when you're there and it can be shipped straight over. Saves a lot of time and effort. What and this is this is one of their particular funds that that uh not is there just for technology funds and it was funded by a four dollar charge on each ticket for the approved, but it states in there that it's uh it can only be used by the justice board. But if the court allows that a constable can use it as long as it's a, a technology enhancement for the computer. So we feel like the ticket writer could get enhancement because right now they're writing manual tickets. They have a lot of trouble reading the manual tickets. So I think it's a lot of things, yes. I'd like a motion with approval. Second. All right. Motion has been made and second. Hold on a second. Um, and my suggestion is when we come back, just include all the constables in, in the next uh, motion. And that way we don't have to, uh, if they want them, it's, it's approved. So, all right, motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed like sign. Motion passes. Thank you, Scott. Item number eight, discuss and consider acceptance of a survey of the south boundary line of Van Zandt County Precinct 2 barn property. You need time in here? Uh, maybe not. Uh, just, just been this off. Yeah, yeah, just go ahead, just for so she been here. I think you want to give us a synopsis of what, what we're approving? I can when I'll let Tony give you. Okay. okay. 
Okay, this is a measure, Judd. This is a survey uh, of the county's property in Precinct Two. It'd be the south boundary line. We've never, we've never fenced that in. It's always been been uh, county property, but we've never fenced it in. And we've had a new survey to to mark it. Marked the line and it's it's been faded. I think it's in our uh, binder. Uh, we want to fence this off and create a new area where we can store uh, material and also uh, equipment. And uh, uh, it's I don't think there's there could be some problems with with uh, with our neighbors on the south side since they've used the county's property for several years to get into their uh, property, but uh, we, we intend to leave them a right-of-way, a 30-foot right-of-way uh, when we pinch it off so they can get into their property. But just want to bring that up just in case. I think Tonda, our district attorney, has looked at it, and also her assistant has looked at it. Zach and we're we're legally we're we're good, but just want to bring it to the court's attention. Do you have anything to say, Tonda? No, I was just going to add that the only provision is that we cannot block them from ingress and egress to their property. We can't landlock them, but as long as we leave them that open for them to have to fence it off. Okay. So uh, I make a motion that we accept the survey for the south boundary line of Benzette County, Precinct 2, Boring Property. All right. Second. Motion been made and seconds. Um, do you need to date? Do you need to say the date of that survey so in, in time future we'll know what survey we're accepting? We can use a uh, well. We can use today's date as, as the. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when that survey it was done a couple of weeks ago. It's May eighth, May twenty four on here. Okay, just just but from May, May twenty four survey number. I, I'll let the survey fact speak for itself. It's it's in the binder and will be uh, in the county clerk's office on the file. Okay. So, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Item number nine discuss, consider awarding road and bridge materials bids for delivered on SSM, AS, PPM, and CPR 4. Uh, the contract period of May 22nd, 2024 through April 30th, 2025. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, this was a this particular product. Had, we did not have any bids during our normal uh, year bid, so we did go out for we rebid this these items, and we received a bid from Texas Materials. And I, did it make your binder? Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. Um, precinct one, precinct three, and precinct four received bids. For the delivered products, so we could just have your approval of these bids this morning, and they will become a part of your run bridge once you bid. Right. Is there a motion to uh, award this bid? No, Mr. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Uh, item number 10, discuss, consider approval of bond for Sandy Hill County Auditor and the amount of $5,000 payable for the district judge. Your motion? I motion. So moved. I second. All right. Motion made and second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion passes. Item number 11, discuss, consider renewal of the bond for the deputy treasurer, April to water. For five thousand dollars for the term beginning June eighth, twenty twenty four, and ending June eighth, twenty twenty five. There a motion to accept this? So moved. Second. All right. Motion made and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. 
Motion passes. Item number 12 of the council consent renewal of the bond for chief deputy treasurer, Irma Hayes, for $5,000 for the beginning, term beginning June the 19th, 2024, ending June the 19th, 2025. So moved, Pearson. Second. All right. Motion made and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed like sign. Motion passes. Item number 13. The, discuss and consider moving the July 17th commissioner court meeting date due to a lack of a quorum. Uh, the suggested new meeting date is Thursday, July the 11th at 9 a.m. Okay. Why are we not gonna have a quorum? On... Because that's the North and East uh, Texas uh, County Judge and Commissioner's Conference. Gotcha. Okay, so we wanna move it to the 18th? The conference is the whole week. Okay. So moving it within the week is not, it's from the 15th to the 18th. Yeah. I, I, I make a motion that we, we move it to Thursday, July the 11th. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second, Pearson. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like time. Motion passes. Uh, all right. Uh, we will now move into a closed, two closed executive sessions. The first in compliance with section 551-071 of the Texas Government Code to seek the advice of its attorney regarding pending or contemplated litigation or cons consultation with its attorney regarding matters protected by the attorney-client privilege and then the second executive session is in compliance with section 551.0725 of the state of Texas government code to conduct a closed meeting to deliberate business and financial issues related to a contract being negotiated. So we will now exit our regular meeting at 934 and